<clears throat> Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, I just figured I would go over my rifle that I used for the 2022 Woodland Brutality match. This is of course a Ruger American Ranch chambered in 5.56 and if you couldn't guess it takes these. These are AR-15 magazines. The magazines, while I'm at it, are Lancer mags, translucent, tan, of course, as you can see. Uh, hold on. Ba -ba -ba. I'm not going to put this in the gun, but I still have one that's mostly loaded. What I love about these, metal feed lips, so these, the bullets strip out extremely easily. And they look a little bit longer on the inside than what the mag pulls do. Not that much of a difference, but for me, it looks like a little bit. The metal feed lips are really nice. Like I said, the bullet strips right off, loads really easy. And the best part, they're translucent. I could look at the back of this and go, okay, this is fully loaded to 10 rounds. It's good to go. Or if you had multiple mags side by side, you can go, okay, they're all good. If not, top off whichever one was loose or low. And um, that actually came in extremely handy at the Woodland Brutality match because... I'd run through half a mag, or I'd dump one early, or I'd put a new one in, get one or two rounds off, and then have to call it clear. So these things are fantastic. They're a little bit more expensive than what you'd normally find a PMAG for. I think I paid like around $15 to $18 each for these, and I have a lot, because this being a 10-round maximum state, I figure I might as well have a bunch of just 10-round capacity magazines. Um, do I care about running 30s through this? No. I could have easily borrowed some from someone down there, or I could have had someone buy them, and I could have run them, and then just given them back to them. But I figured this is what I'm actually going to be running in the state. God forbid if anything does happen, so why not practice with what you got? I'm going to put this off to the side, because I don't need to have live ammunition on this table. Chamber is clear, as you can see. This is a pretty long bolt, but it is very smooth and very fast. I probably have a couple thousand rounds through this thing, probably in the area of three to four thousand rounds. And all I do is either a very light coating of oil or a little bit of a uh, little bit of grease. And it is, if you haven't seen the video, extremely fast and smooth. Magazines load up extremely easy. This is an Odin Works, if I remember correctly. It's been about four years uh, extended magazine release uh, on the original gun before this was on there. The plastic actually covers up about half the magazine release, so pulled it apart. I originally opened it up with like a razor blade. It didn't take that much. And then I installed this so I can very easily drop a mag. And they do drop right out. So these are excellent mags, and, well, that's basically it. A couple of the other accessories that I have on this gun is an A2 birdcage, because this does come threaded. It's a 16 and a quarter inch barrel, I think. Uh, why an A2 birdcage? I had one, and they're cheap. They're like 15 bucks, and they work extremely well. Harris bipod, this is a non-swivel. This is a 6 to 9 with notches in between, as you can see. Uh, most of the stages that I used this, I deployed it about three or four notches. So this way I'd be able to get a pretty good level off of a flat floor. Find that out in testing. You know, you run this all the way low or all the way high. It's usually not in a good spot. Hiya, cuppies. My kitty cat's coming to say hi. Hi. What is this piece of orange power cord doing there? Well, this is a trick that I learned from Sinister Rifleman a long time ago. It is quick deploy for your Harris bipod, which I uh, only used once, I think, on stage four. Uh, yeah, I think that was about it. But fantastic. Come over here. If you have from underneath, easy to flip up. Or what I more commonly do is if I have the gun in my shooting hand, I come underneath it, pull it, or just flip it down like so. If you have a Harris bipod, I strongly recommend doing a setup like this and giving it a shot because it is a little bit faster than doing that and then coming down here and trying to leverage this down or trying to go one and then the other. It's just a worthwhile feature if you ask me. The sling is a wilderness sling. This is a Rhodesian and um, it's fantastic. I have several of these. It's put on with 
Uncle Mike's, I believe they are, quick release uh, clamps over here. Unscrew this, you can see, push it off the pin and it cams out of the way. I only use this as a two point sling. I did not use this as a ching sling uh, because I just didn't really have the necessity for it. Every position that I was shooting slightly offhand, it would just take a little bit too long to get my arm through this. Um, the only stage I could have seen that being a possible benefit was maybe the Casarda drill, but I ended up just taking a knee and supporting my left knee off my left elbow, and it was plenty fast for me. I think I finished like top like 40 in that stage. It was quite impressive. Uh, the rest of the gun is, well, pretty simple. I think it's an EGW rail. Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, I digress. This is a standard rail that comes with the gun. It's a factory rail. Just make sure you blue Loctite this because when I first got this gun, I thought it was tight. It wasn't and uh, it shot itself loose in about 10 rounds and I didn't have any tools to adjust it at the range. Fail me, I know. But anyway, it's a good pick rail. Perfectly fine. Uh, it works with everything I've thrown on this and we'll talk about that in a minute. As far as the bolt... I'll go back to the bolt. Very, very smooth. You can see this is a 3D printed clamshell that I have on there. I made this myself because the original knob is just a little bit too small, a little bit too slick. And if you're running this bolt really hard and fast like I do, you will go up and then you'll come back and you'll punch yourself in the face. I did it a couple times too many and uh, said, I have to come up with a fix for this. They do sell replacements for this because the bolt, which I'll actually show you, lever on the side to take it down if it wants to come out come on come on so everything wants to fight me tonight there we go clear my cheap riser it is a very large three lug single piece bolt but you remove the firing pin and spring and this entire assembly slides right out but the ones that they have are like really big like pineapple looking ones and I just don't like how they look and they're a little expensive like 80 bucks or so so I made this for basically free and uh, it it's held up extremely extremely well I haven't pulled this bolt apart but I haven't had the need to thankfully as far as the trigger it's got Ruger's excellent little freedom tr not freedom trigger I guess it's just the American trigger I don't remember the exact name but the blade on it acts as a safety as you can see I could not fire the weapon until I push the blade in. Trigger pull on this is set to about two and a half pounds, which is perfect for me. This little thingamabob is perfect as it acts like a second or a primary stage in a two-stage trigger. And then once you're there, it is very clean and crisp, very short travel. I love the trigger on this thing. Uh, as far as everything else on the back, I don't really have a lot of room on my desk, I apologize, but I have this little cheek riser up here just to add a little bit more comfort and a little bit of storage. I keep some lens cleaners in here, chamber flag, and all the tools needed to take this thing apart if I needed to in the field. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this bag is the zipper closes there, which means that the little tassel that was on there usually like blows in my eye or in my nose, so I took it off because... I'll just shove that down like so, streamline it a little bit, and it's a non-issue. Anyway, continuing on with the top part, I have a set of Vortex rings on here. They're nothing fancy. These are, I believe, they're mediums. They are 30 millimeter, of course, and they're one inch high. So yeah, I think they're the mediums. I got them off of Sparks, I think, a long time ago, and they're just really nice rings. I didn't review them because well, there's not much to really review, and my ring reviews don't usually get that many views, so why spend the time doing so? However, the piece de la resistance on this thing is, of course, the Steiner P4XI, or at least it is for me, because this optic on this gun is just the perfect combination. It is very fast, it is very practical, it is very useful, and making those hits on those full-size IPSC targets at about 400 yards was a piece of cake. I did drop one round on that because I'm an idiot, and I was just going so fast, I held a, held center mass on the crosshair as opposed to holding one or two ticks up, and I dropped one right underneath it. 
Once I realized I missed, I cycled, I realized my folly, and I held, and squeezed, and hit. It's an absolute perfect, perfect combination for me. I don't need 6x. I never had the need to use it on any of the stages. And again, the farthest we went out was about 400 yards, so perfect. 1x per 100 yards on a man-sized target, and that's it. These are just standard Butler Creep caps. I usually don't have caps on this gun, but I figured I'll be going through a lot of dusty and muddy situations, so why not protect the glass if you can? And you know what? You could still see a little bit on here. There is a significant amount of dust on top. Uh, I have cleaned the gun very lightly. I just sort of like brushed it off. But this thing was basically caked on with dust. Despite the fact it was a woodland brutality match, all the roads were dirt and crushed gravel and dust was just going everywhere. It's perfect. It's perfect. One thing that wasn't perfect from the factory is the stock. And I'll start at the front. I haven't done anything to rectify this yet, but you can see there's a lot of wiggle to it. So if you load up this bipod a lot, it will flex and it could throw up your shot slightly. Uh, one of my, or one of the solutions I'm thinking about doing, I'm actually going to pull the action out. I'm going to see how much room I have inside this uh, handguard channel and maybe put some carbon fiber tubes from like arrows in there, hot glue them in place or epoxy them in place and see if that helps make it a little bit more rigid. Because the other main problem with this stock has already been fixed, which as you can see is back here. I'll adjust the camera a little bit. The factory grip on this thing is almost like that. You can see where it ends right there. And it was like that. It was pathetic. It never felt comfortable in any position. Standing, crouching, kneeling, sitting, prone, or off a bench. And it was probably the biggest thing that I really disliked about this gun. I would have absolutely replaced the stock on this thing if anyone made a uh, qualitative stock. Boyd's do make inlays for this exact rifle with the AR-15 magazine release. But they're like $350 or so by the time you factor in shipping and tax and whatnot. And then I'd still have to pillar bed it. And I just didn't feel like doing all that work for like the third time. I've done it with my 457, did it with my 452, not my 455. I had to do it with my 455, but I ended up selling that beforehand. And my Hawa, my Hawa Mini Action. All those have Boyd stocks and they all needed work. They needed to be pillar bedded and just bedded in general. And I didn't feel like doing that with this rifle. The stock on this does have two metal steel V-blocks that ride the action in between the stock. And it works great because I get, with a 4X optic at 100 yards with good quality ammo, I group about an inch, inch and a quarter. And that's only with 4X at 100 yards. So I do plan on doing other things with this in a little bit, but more on that soon. What I ended up doing to fix the problem was not spend $300, but more like $30. This epoxy sculpt it, sculpt is really inexpensive. You get it on Amazon, it's like 30 something bucks. Two part, you mix them together and this stuff turns into stone, but not just turning into stone, it just adheres to basically everything. So I drilled a couple holes in the stock, cleaned it up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, made sure everything was nice and clean, and I started sculpting. And as you can see, from the bottom, I put a massive amount of clay on this thing. It sticks out about an extra inch and a quarter, and I made it nice and flat. And you know what? It completely transforms this rifle. Before, when I have to drop a mag, I'd have to pinch it with my middle finger, slide my hand down, and try to really force my hand forward to grab it. Now, I'm right on it. You can see I could adjust two-part safety without issue. My finger, my trigger finger and the pad are perfect on the trigger and then click without having to come off of it. 
I do have a little lip down here at the bottom because I wanted to make it look really extra cool. And you know what? It fucking works really, really well because your hand just, it folds so naturally in place and it's just, it's perfect because you can mold it to basically whatever the hell you want. I was going to stipple it, but I decided, you know what? I wanted to make sure that this wasn't going to come off. So I ended up buying some Canadian made hockey grip tape. I don't play hockey, but I knew of the tape being used for multiple things. And it was absolutely perfect on this thing. It was really cheap. I think I paid for three rolls, like 15 bucks made in Canada. So how could you go wrong with that? Fabrique et Canada. So as you can see, this is a little bit dirty because my hands are muddy through most of, the, most of the event. And it does have a little nick right here where it ripped through. But guess what? This stuff is so cheap, I could just replace it whenever the hell I want. So with all of that being sorted, I got this gun to be basically exactly where I want it. Do I love it how it is? I really, really do. In fact, I love it to the point where I'm probably going to sell my Howa Precision and I'm going to do a couple of different things with this. I'm probably going to take these rings off and buy a QD single one-piece mount that will replicate this height. It's about an inch. I think one of the LaRue's will come in about the right height. The ADMs are a little bit higher. I don't want to go any higher because right now the cheek weld is, is perfect for every sort of position. But I'm thinking about getting a one-piece mount for this and finally using my Miyata Optica 6.3 to 18 by 50 and putting another one on this so I could swap out between the two. And as you've seen from, if you've watched them, some of my mount reviews, uh, they hold perfect zero. So I would have no concerns with going back and forth between these two and turning it from basically a very short, fast, capable carbine to a slightly more long range focused carbine. And once I figure out how to take out some of the flex in the fore, in the uh, handguard, it would be, I think, a perfect platform, especially with this new grip design. So I think that's where the future of this rifle is going to go. But what I absolutely know is going to happen is I'm going to do a nice camo job on this. I've been wanting to camo and paint a rifle <clears throat> for a very long time. And what gun better than this? The gun that got me in the top 50 of 169, 171 shooters at the Woodland Brutality match. I, I, it, it's going to be immaculate. I do plan on attending more brutality matches and more two gun matches in the future because I, I've been doing the small matches at my local range and that's been a lot of fun, but this was just such a next level that I wasn't too sure how I'd feel about doing it. But once I did it, now I'm completely fucking hooked. So I want to be known as the guy that runs a bolt faster than most other people and has a shoot to hit ratio probably better than most. And um, this is the perfect rifle for the job. Anyway, as far as the camo pattern goes, you might remember a long time ago, I had mentioned, or actually you might not know, um, shoot, was that only on my Patreon? It might have been only on my Patreon, but I wanted to do like a woodland camo. So I was thinking about doing an original base or a complete base on the entire action barrel and everything else to match the stock. Then I was going to do splotches of brown and OD green. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to end up doing, but this is going to happen sooner rather than later because I just want to get this thing 100% to this vision that I have in my brain. And then I'm going to compete with this thing as much as I can. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little spotlight on my go-to rifle. Um, hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.